What's up, everybody? Welcome to Move the Sticks. DJ Bucky back with you. Buck, I see you. Uh, you're wearing the Tar Heels gear. Uh, well, you're marching so, on. You're marching this on. Wasn't, this wasn't intentional. What happened is I had to walk the dog. And okay. you have to take the dog on an early walk. You just grab the first thing that you can find. And this was the first thing that I could find because after watching the games or whatever. So here we are. Hey, you're, you're moving on. I, I, uh, I bought into this bogus lie of manifestation. I think you're a believer in that. Um, mm -hmm. I bought a pair, a hideous pair of green and yellow dunks. Um, because I just told my son, I'm like, I'm going to manifest Baylor oh, making it to the Baylor. final four. Baylor, if they get okay. to the final four, then we'll, we'll go. We'll figure out a way to go. We'll make it happen. I've got my Baylor dunks. I haven't even taken the tissue out of them yet. They're sitting on a shelf. They have to wait a year for those things. Well, you didn't put them on. You're supposed to put them on, DJ. No, You're supposed no, to no. Wear they were final the four game. only. They were final. They were, all, they oh, were there as no. a, as no, a, as a reward for getting to the final four that never happened. So There'll be a new version of the dunks next year when you go back to do it. You might as well get a wear them. I, nobody wants. You can't wear these. These are not. Yeah, these are these are Baylor. Like maybe I'll go to I like know. a ballet these or are, something at Baylor, and I can no, wear I know they, I know they're they're out of your normal thing, but like that's that's part of the stuff. Like you see everybody wearing the dunks. I saw a UCLA women's basketball team did a reveal with their Jordans and their yeah. blue and you know, like that, that's what everyone does. Like that's part of the tournament. The tournament is about getting your new gear and kind of unboxing it. I think that's the mm -hmm. new thing there. People okay. People record when they unbox different things. So you should have had a video with Baylor's basketball team tags where you're yeah. unboxing the hey, Ducks. Hey, let's go, guys. Yeah, that and might then, have been. And then as soon as they lost, I could have cut another video with Oregon and been like, hey, you know, come on, let's but, go Ducks. And they're both gone. But technically, you're not out because if you open up your mind, oh, the, you allow Baylor's women's, the Baylor's women, women's team the still women, The women yes, are in the Sweet like 16, so you could – you still could get some usage out of it. Okay, that's good. That's good. Maybe that's I just got <laughs> transition to the women's game, and I'll be good. Um, all right, Buck, on today's episode, we are going to do a, a fun little exercise. We're going to do an offensive-only first-round mock draft, so only mm -hmm. offensive players. Um, we'll have some fun. We'll rip through that uh, in just a little bit. But uh, we are coming on the heels of uh, uh, pro days. We had a bunch of them that have mm -hmm. taken place, including one recently at Michigan, which was highly attended, as you can imagine, with a zillion players that they have. Um, and I feel like, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. I, I, uh, in the mm -hmm. last mock draft, I had JJ McCarthy going fourth. I had quarterbacks going mm -hmm. the first four picks, which by the way, I was driving on Sunday and I heard, mm -hmm. uh, Hartman, your colleague at, uh, at Fox sports radio, Steve Hartman, Steve Hartman, Steve Hartman. I was driving with my son and he said, uh, they started talking about the draft and he said, uh, you know, there's some analysts out there. I think he said like some pronounced, like former NFL, you know, personnel mm -hmm. guys. One of which I won't name him. One of which had the first four picks being quarterbacks, including the Minnesota Vikings trading up and taking JJ McCarthy. I, I just can't see that happening. I just don't. I just no. There's no chance that could ever happen. Okay. So Hartman, Hartman's not. He is not wanting to hear it. He's he thinks it's mm -hmm. pie in the sky by and by. But the best yeah. part is, after he said that, he said. uh, you know, I feel bad for these guys because the guys that have to do this, I mean, when they don't get it right, I mean, they just, I know they feel terrible. You know, I know those guys must feel ter terrible. And my son's next to me and he goes, uh, I don't think I've ever seen you get upset about being wrong about a mock draft. So, I go, nope. So, so <laughs> I, I literally had this conversation with my dad today on the walk. We were talking about my, he was like, hey, I, I didn't hear from you yesterday. What was going on? I said, pops, I was locked in having to do this mock draft. And I said, like, <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I said, pops, here's the thing. I probably care too much about it. But I said, I want you to understand being a fan of your favorite team. And if you get one thing wrong about that team, some transaction they make, what the depth chart looks like, you put a defensive tackle there. If they've, oh, yeah. if they've signed a marquee yeah. free agent defensive tackle, like, it's coming down on you. I said, yeah. so you have to spend a lot of your time making sure you're up to date on the latest transactions so you can accurately write your little summary when it comes to the mock draft on a fictional exercise that mm. is not going to come true, but it's just one of those things. And I was like, I said, I love the cottage industry that you know the NFL draft has created because it's one of the reasons you and I have been able to kind of get in on the media side. But what I hate about it is mock drafting isn't scouting. It's a mm -hmm. part of a process, but it's not scouting. And so I know when I drop the mock draft, just like when you dropped your latest, 
you go on the radio and what do you want to talk about? Not what you really think about players. Oh my God, DJ, you dropped such and such in your latest mock. What does it mean? Is he falling? And you're like, well, no, I just wanted to take a different perspective. Like if this happens here, this is how the rest of it trickles down as opposed to, hey, DJ, what do you really think? I just saw the release of your top 50. Who are the yeah. guys that you really like? Who are the yeah. guys that are on the border? Because that's more of a true depiction of what you really view the players in this landscape as opposed to the mock draft, even though mock drafting is fun. It's informed guessing uh, versus mm -hmm. uh, your opinion on a player. So it's two, two different exercises, one of which you can defend. You can defend your opinion. It's hard mm -hmm. to defend a guess. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to get to, by the way, that episode's coming up. Uh, we're going to have your oh, yeah. mock draft dropping uh, as well. So we'll have that one uh, coming your way this week. So be on the lookout for that and be on the lookout to read that at NFL.com. Uh, but real quick on the pro days, McCarthy, a lot of buzz mm -hmm. coming out of there. Shouldn't be a surprise. We've been talking about it for a long time. Uh, Harbaugh, you know, he came out initially mm -hmm. and said he would be the first quarterback picked. Everybody laughed and scoffed. Now, I don't think he's going to be the first quarterback picked. But I do think that, you know, there's a chance Maybe mm -hmm. he sneaks into the top three. Maybe he's one of those first three quarterbacks and bumps one of these guys out. Or, at worst, I think he'll be the fourth quarterback. And, Buck, as we sit here, it is as we date this, March 25th, as we're recording, do you think there's any chance that J.J. McCarthy gets out of the top ten? No. I really don't. I, 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 don't, I don't think. I mean, look, let, let's just say, let's, let's play static, right? Because you like to do trades in mock drafts. I don't do trades, but let's, yeah. let's just say it. He goes no later than 12. If, if it mm. just remains chalk as it is now, no later than 12. J.J. McCarthy is going in the first round. And when you look at what J.J. McCarthy offers, um, you were scouting. You remember when, when Aaron Rodgers and Alex Smith were coming out, right? When yeah. Alex Smith was coming out of Utah, I kind of compared J.J. McCarthy to Alex Smith when he was at Utah. I think Alex Smith at Utah was 22-1. and one. Uh, He led Utah into the BCS conversation urban meyer had the utes rolling and a lot of the conversation on alex smith was man yeah like, like like he's good but how do we quantify what he's been able to do because the numbers were really good but not spectacular and alex smith ends up being the number one overall pick i think for jj mccarthy he benefits from some of the same stuff that alex smith would benefit from there's nothing that you can say about his intangibles his work ethic the winning pedigree He's won at a major level. He played for a pro coach who's had success developing quarterbacks, played on the, the biggest stage, as you could talk about the Big Ten and Michigan. They're talking about he is the greatest quarterback to ever play there, which naturally ties in Tom Brady, Ryan Greasy, yeah. some of the other quarterbacks. Jim Harbaugh. Have, you know, Jim Harbaugh. Chay, like, there have been quarterbacks that have played there that have had success in the National Football League. To say that, well, J.J. McCarthy has to be in that conversation. And then when you watch him play, and you've always done a really good job of articulating this. It's not watching him the whole game and saying, oh, man, he only has 16 throws. It's putting on the got-to-have-it plays. Third yeah. down, two-minute red zone. What does he look like in those moments? When you look at J.J. McCarthy, he kills it in those situations. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about the draft not being a production-based draft but a projection-based draft, there are going to be people that can project J.J. McCarthy being a good pro. And that's ultimately going to lead him to be a top 10 pick. Yeah. I, and I think when you just also just look at the demand, right? You know, you've got the supply, which is the number of quarterbacks. And then the question is, is there a demand for him in terms of the teams looking for quarterbacks? There is. There's just a bunch of teams, you know, and you've got the teams right there with the first three picks. You've got then outside of that range, you've got the New York Giants who could be in that market. You know, mm -hmm. I, there's talk in talking to people around the league. They think even after when this one surprised me, but even after Kirk Cousins signed with Atlanta, if they're you know they're, if their quarterback that they loved, if for some reason you see these scenarios, maybe one of them were to slide. That hey, don't rule that out. Um, they're still you know potentially looking for the the future guy. Um, so that's a you know I'd maybe put that below fifty percent, but at least there's conversation. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the Vikings at eleven. Uh, then you get into the the Broncos Vikings, and the Raiders. Broncos. That's you quarterback the row right there. And you got the Rams that are hanging down there because at some point they have to make a decision on what they're going to do after Matthew Stafford. I mean, there are a lot of teams that need quarterbacks. And I know we have this conversation every year. A, will they really do it? Will they wait to the second round, fifth-year option, and all those other things? I just know this year more than any other year, there are a lot of teams that need to talk about and think about the quarterback position, which is why – 
you're pretty confident that at least four are going in the first round. And there's yeah. a reasonable expectation that five will go in the first round. Yeah, I'm with you. Usually somebody gets left out. If we're saying there's those six top guys, I would guess that one of them doesn't make it. But um, I think we have a real, real, real opportunity to see five uh, go in round number one. All right, let's take a quick break. We come back. We're going we're gonna to do a fun little exercise here. Offensive only, mock draft, defense need not apply. We'll get to that right after this. All right, Buck. We're going to uh, we're going to rely on uh, on PFF mm -hmm. here with the mock draft simulator, and uh, and what we can do here. It, it's a fun little exercise, I, and trust me, I've talked to general managers who have fun playing around on this thing. Uh, it, you can yeah. you can waste a lot of time on this, uh, but <laughs> uh, you go to mock draft simulator. You can click on filter the position. So we're going to take all of the the defensive players out. So we're just going to look at the offensive players here. And we'll give some time here. We don't we need to like you don't need to make it right away. If we need to look at some depth charts here, remind ourselves mm -hmm. what's taking place in free agency. We've got our uh, our lads depth charts up as well. Um, we can have some fun here. But I figured uh, uh, offensive only. We'll go every other pick. You ready to go? Yep. All right, Nabil, the commissioner, has decided that I have the first pick. I just want to put that out there. I did not stake my claim to that. That was Commissioner yeah, that Nabil. Mm -hmm. That makes it easy for you. So, I mean, I don't need to spend any time here. This is going to be the first pick, the Chicago Bears. I've got them taking Caleb Williams from USC. Um, they waited. They were patient. Um, didn't do the quarterback thing last year. They were rewarded uh, by Carolina having an atrocious year, and they end up getting Caleb Williams, who goes into a very nice situation. Buck, you're up with the Washington Commanders. Okay, so this is really interesting. Uh, you talk about Adam Peters, and Adam Peters was with the San Francisco 49ers. He took Trey Lance. I am saying that maybe he learned something from that exercise to get a quarterback that has plenty of experience. So that would lead us to some of the older players. Jaden Daniels would be one of those. And when you think about Cliff Kingsbury, his history with Kyler Murray and other athletic quarterbacks, I just believe Jaden Daniels is the pick. So I'm going to go with Jaden Daniels. All right, so you've got Jaden Daniels there with the second pick. We're not going to do trades here. I know there's been some talk, and you see it mm -hmm. uh, floating around on social media, and the rumor mill is a buzz that maybe J.J. McCarthy surpasses mm -hmm. uh, Drake May. Mm -hmm. And you think mm -hmm. about the New England Patriots, Michigan quarterback. I know you've got a new regime there, Tangibles. but you can imagine yeah. all that stuff winning. You, you could see that. Maybe the seeds have been planted. Maybe that's the shocker of all shockers. Maybe we get... Uh, J.J. McCarthy to leapfrog him. It wouldn't rule me out. I wouldn't rule that out. I wouldn't say I get, shouldn't use the word shocked. But I'm going to stick with kind of the conventional way we've thought about this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say we end up getting Drake May here with a third overall selection. Ooh, okay. So now the fun starts. And the fun starts because yep. as much as we talk about the league, the league is what we talk about the P's. It's passers, it's playmakers, it's pass rushers. And then, you know, it's the pass protectors. Well, I'm going to go and get a playmaker for Calder Murray. And I'm a look, I'm gonna stay the course, even though the buzz is building about Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze maybe being at the top of the charts. I'm gonna go Marvin Harrison Jr. because I believe when the Cardinals look at Marvin Harrison Jr., they're going to look and see a younger version of Larry Fitzgerald, and they know how successful Larry Fitzgerald was for them. I think they follow suit. That's why Marvin Harrison Jr. is a picket for. All right, I like that. Now we get to the Chargers, and this is uh this is an interesting one because you've got the choice now mm. of Neighbors and Adunze. This is a tough one because I could make a case for either one. Neighbors bring you that explosive element, the speed. They want to run the ball uh, with Jim Harbaugh. Now you get a chance to pay that off with some big home run plays with Neighbors. Then you've got Keenan Allen and Mike Williams exiting, which let's focus primarily on mm -hmm. Keenan Allen and what he brought and what they'll be missing mm -hmm. with him. Keenan did a lot of work in the slot. Keenan uh, was a third down maestro. Um, mm -hmm. Keenan had a big size and frame. Keenan is incredibly sharp and smart. Could get on the same page as Justin Herbert. All those things to say that that is a very, very similar definition of Roma Dunze. So while I think trading down is an option in the real draft, in this exercise, we're not doing trades. I think if they're stuck here, um, you've got your choice between those wide receivers. I don't know that there's a wrong choice, but I'm going to say Roma Dunze gives them that size and physicality. Uh, that seem to fit a little bit more with the way they want to play football. DJ, I do think it's a unique time when we talk about all these wideouts. All of them are similarly graded. All of them bring their own uh, set of skills. And because of that, I'm going to take Malik Neighbors. You left me Malik Neighbors. I actually think he's the right pick and fit for the Giants. They really haven't been right since they had a catch and run specialist years ago in OBJ. Uh, Malik Neighbors gives them that guy who can, look, he has the juice. He can catch the short passes, take it the distance. He has vertical playmaking ability. 
he is the right fit for what they need around Daniel Jones. So he comes off the board at number six. Yep, I like that. Uh, I, and again, I think if there are if there were no trades, I think this is actually not just an offensive exercise. I think this could be the way that this actually goes down uh, once we get to the draft. Uh, all right, the Tennessee Titans, I don't think this matters whether we're doing an offensive-only draft or a regular old mock draft. If Joe Alt is there, it makes all the sense in the world. It's a need for them at the left tackle position. Um, they've done some nice things. Rand's been aggressive. Um Highlighted by going out and getting Snead, uh, paying a nice price for him. Actually, wasn't too terrible in terms of the the draft pick compensation, no, but paying him a bunch all. of money to uh, shore up that secondary. I, I love uh, I love the idea here of throwing a big left tackle in there to protect Will Levis. So let's go with Joe Alt. All right, solid selection by the Tennessee Titans. Now we have the Atlanta Falcons, and this is where the fun and the chaos can begin because we anticipate a defensive player going to the Falcons, but in this offensive only draft, we can't go that route. So now I'm thinking about my quarterback. I'm thinking about Kirk Cousins and how I can get him going. <laughs> Just imagine about building a super offense that gives him every weapon that he possibly could need. Let's go with Brock Bowers from Georgia. Just think about the two tight end sets and what we can do, the fun that we can have with Brock Bowers, Kyle Pitts, the weapons on the perimeter. Man, I just think if you're the Atlanta Falcons, why would you bypass an opportunity to keep kind of like a local product, meaning University of Georgia kid close to home? I like it. Um, to me, I look, that would be an embarrassment of riches for them uh, offensively to have all of that in place. But, uh, man, can you imagine just what you could do to defenses in terms of the versatility, the flexibility? You can move those guys all over the field. you got two tight ends that can line up anywhere and can basically play wide receiver if you want them to. So, uh, man, that would be uh, – that's a fun scenario. That's why we do this offensive one here to get some different names in the mix. So you got Bowers going eight. Now I've got Chicago. They are back up. Um, they've got the quarterback, so we've got the big three receivers. They're gone. I could go after the fourth one, um, or I could go to the offensive line here and just double down. They sent a uh, big contingency there uh, to the Oregon State Pro Day from the Chicago Bears, so I'm going to give them Talisi Fuaga, who's someone, and I know they like I like their they're like their young tackles that they have there, but I think Fuaga has the ability to play guard. Um, he could do that at a very high level, and then I think at least. Um, you could have a competition there with Braxton Jones. I know they like Braxton Jones, but at least that's a uh, that's mm -hmm. a competition that could exist. Worst case scenario, he slides right into guard, and now you are cooking with gas with a very physical offensive line there in Chicago. Look, very physical offensive line, and I think this is where we may have offensive tackle alley. And so you're going to lease Fuaga for the Chicago Bears. For the New York Jets, I know you signed Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith has been uh, dealing with injuries the last few seasons. So let's go get. Olu Fashanu from Penn State. Oh, nice. So now we have a pure left tackle there in place. Just in case Tyron Smith isn't able to last the season, we now got a young guy that either starts from day one or he has a little apprenticeship behind our perennial Pro Bowl player. I like it. Um, that gets me to the Minnesota Vikings here. Um, and again, Vikings, you know that they, they'd want a quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... And this is a situation where obviously we've got mm -hmm. uh, we've got some off the board, but mm -hmm. when I look at Caleb being gone, I look at Jaden being gone, I look at Drake being gone. Lo and behold, when there's no trade, look who's just staring me right in the face here. Uh, ding, and that's JJ ding, McCarthy from ding. from the Michigan Wolverines. So don't have to trade up. No trades in this mock draft. Uh, we still match the quarterback here. That's JJ McCarthy going eleven. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. DJ, so now you started something because here I am. I'm Sean Payton. I'm Sean Payton, and I'm trying to figure out what do I want to do. We can talk about adding all these position players and doing all that, but you know, and I know in this league, you cannot win without a quarterback. And as much confidence as you may profess in Jared Stidham, I think we're going to have to go back in the well and get us a quarterback. <laughs> and the quarterback that we're going to get is the experienced quarterback that I would say maybe can do some of the Drew Brees stuff that Sean Payton likes to do. Let's go with Bo Nix from Oregon coming off the board at number 12. Hey, you can boo and hiss and all that other stuff. But at the end of the day, you better have a young quarterback that you can develop. I think Bo Nix's game translates very, very well to Sean Payton's system. All right. We've seen a quarterback run here. If we're going to try and solve some problems, it uh, gets me to the Raiders. They've got Aiden O'Connell. They signed Gardner Minshew. You could look at uh, at right tackle uh, being an area they could address here. I've talked about Michael Penix. I mean, that's what this decision would come down to. I've been giving them Michael Penix 
Um, but I want to keep a quarterback alive as we go through the rest of this mock draft. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave Penix for the time being. And mm. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a right tackle with this pick. And that is going to be, man, I've got some good options. Mm. Uh, of there's some really good players here. But I'll go with Big Latham. I'm going to go J.C. Latham here from Alabama Ooh. to plug into that right tackle spot. Uh, I like it, DJ. I like it because, look, it's an obvious need. And we are right back to where we talked about being in the strength of this draft. We talked about offensively. We love the wide receivers and we love the pass protectors, the offensive tackles. And so here I am. I'm the New Orleans Saints. I have Ryan Ramchick dealing with the injury. Uh, I have Trevor Penning underperforming. So I need a guy who has versatility and some ability. So how about we go University of Washington, Troy Futano. Let's take him right off the board. Let's move him around because we just need to figure out a way to put our best five on the field. And I'm going to take a guy who has some versatility to allow me to put the best five linemen on the field. Uh, okay. All right. Fatanu, uh, one of my favorite players in the draft. Literally, literally five position flexibility there. Um, all right. That gets me to the Indianapolis Colts. You know, wide receiver, um, you know, I like the three that they have. When they brought Pittman back and you've got Alec Pierce, who I like, and Josh Downs. I mean, that's not a bad young threesome there. Maybe add in a, uh, a flyer, like some big-time speed. Uh, that could be an option. You also have the offensive line, maybe the interior of the offensive line. Um, you've got Quentin Nelson and Ryan Kelly. Uh, but with Will Freeze there, um, that could be an area you could address. I don't think there's another tight end uh, worth going here. We're not going to see a running back go. They're not going to take a quarterback when, uh, when they're set there with a young stud at the position. So I'm going to take the flyer. I'm going to go with the big-time speed. I'm going to go with Brian Thomas Jr. here to add, uh, add to their wide mm. receiver room. Now you've got four really, really interesting, young, talented wideouts. Okay, and the other thing we always talk about with Chris Ballard, traits, prototypes. Oh, yeah, he's got that. Have all the stuff. He is absolutely going to go for that. So I am with that. Let me make sure I get him off the board. You've got, yeah, you've got Seattle up with the sixth yeah, I got, pick here. Here we go. So Seattle on the clock. I can go anywhere when it comes to it. And so DJ, we're talking about versatility. We're talking about guys that can be able to do a bunch of different things. Uh, smart picks. Let's go with Graham Barton coming off the board okay. for the Seattle Seahawks. You cannot go wrong with the versatility that it brings to the position. We talked about the flex. Let's go with being able to have a flexible player there. The center in the guard, he can do it all. Graham Barton. So now you got the Jaguars at 17. Jags at 17, Buck. Um, I could look along the interior of the offensive line. They brought in Mitch Morse. I like that move. I think that was an underrated move for the Jags. Um, but that's an area I could address. You've got the young tackles here with Harrison. Um, you've got Cam Robinson still under, under contract. You've got Walker Little. I don't. I, I definitely you could upgrade there uh, at the tackle position. You go out and sign Gabe Davis, uh, but you lose Ridley. That's kind of a swap. Uh, one for one there. You've got Zay Jones. You've got Christian Kirk. Ah, man, this is a tough one because I, I I'm looking at the offensive line. I'm looking at the wide receiver spot. And uh, hmm, let's see here. I'll tell you what. Screw it. This is a uh, this is a this is a league where you got to score points to win. Uh, you want a difference maker. You want somebody who can uh, make life easier on your quarterback. Um, ah man. Now I've got a couple different guys I want to choose from here. Mm, you know early, what? I might surprise early. you. I might surprise you here. This is going to be a little early, but I'm going to take Lad McConkey from Georgia. Um, oh, that part of the country. Oh man, you talk the guy that uh, uh, they would have seen a yeah. lot of him uh, over the last few years. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, he's going to give you some easy completions. But I'm going to take Lad McConkey here and throw him to the Jags. Uh, DJ, you know how to play to the, the to the fan base. You talk about. Uh, the cocktail party, Georgia, Florida game, Lad McConkey doing his thing, kind of keep him around the fold. I like that. So the Cincinnati Bengals, the Cincinnati Bengals, you talk about a league scoring points. I have uh, a number one wide receiver in Jamar Chase who's going to get paid paid. I have a receiver in T. Higgins who's on the franchise tag, but he feels like he's being held hostage. Tyler Boyd is no longer in the building. I got to go get another playmaker and a pass catcher to make sure that my guy Joe Burrow is always happy. How about A.D. Mitchell? A.D. Mitchell coming in, being that Ooh. third wide receiver this year, but then being able to maybe take over the number two role if we're unable to get T. Higgins done. A.D. Mitchell coming off the board at 18 to the Cincinnati Bengals. All right, I've got a tough one with the Rams because they're another one we've been looking at the defensive side of the ball for them. 
This is a team, um, you know, that has done a, a really nice job of revamping their offensive line, their play style. They go out and get Jonah Jackson in free agency. Avila was a home run picket guard last year. He moves over to center. They re-sign Kevin Dotson. So the interior is set. They're in really good shape there. Uh, I'm going to bring in some competition, though, for Alaric Jackson at left tackle. Um, so mm -hmm. when you look at the tackles that are still available at this point in time, where we are in this uh, in this scenario, you've mm -hmm. got Mims, you've got Guyton. Uh, those would be the two that it would come down to. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and gamble. I'm going to gamble on big Amarius Mims here if I'm the Rams. Oh, DJ, you are killing me because Mike Tomlin is sitting there salivating at the possibility of potentially having Amarius Mims team up with Broderick Jones to allow the Pittsburgh Steelers to go be that physical team that he wants them to be, but he's unable to do that. So now we're, we're on the clock with the Steelers at 20. And I look, I have to reshuffle the deck. I got to take Tyler Guyton. I want to make sure that we continue to upgrade this offensive line. I got to figure out which one is more comfortable, Guyton or Broderick Jones over on the left side. I like Guyton's athleticism, so maybe we'll give him the opportunity to play on the left, but he's my pick at 20. Okay. Um, all right, that gets me to the Miami Dolphins at 21. Um, you look along the interior of the offensive line, uh, that's an area that they could look to address. Man, we've had a lot of guys go off the board, though, so uh, the <laughs> I mean, options start yeah. to shrink a little bit. Yeah. But but when you're doing offensive only. But that being said, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go with big JPJ here. I'm going to go with Jackson Powers Johnson, who's going to give a nice, firm pocket to a shorter quarterback in two. I think that, uh, uh, that would help. They want to get the ball out. They want to create some pocket separation. He, ha he handles that for them. Yeah, I mean, look, that's that's a nice pick. And now I am the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm sitting here. And I'm sitting here because I got Devontae Smith. I got A.J. Brown. Uh, we just signed Devontae Parker at wide receiver. Uh, we have Saquon Barkley in the backfield. Typically, we are a line of scrimmage team, but I don't know if I, I like the options that I have available for me right now at, at, at this. So, mm. Mm -hmm. but you know what? If you're Howie Roseman, you never can go wrong loading up at the line of scrimmage. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Jordan Morgan right now from Arizona. We're going to stockpile that offensive line room and just make sure that we always have the depth. I don't know how much longer Lane Johnson is going to play. I'm still trying to make sure that I have enough in supply because the one thing that the Eagles have always done, they've been able to dominate at the front line. I'm going to take the, the top rated offensive tackle. Jordan Morgan comes off the board right now to the field of Eagles. All right, there we go. Um, that gets me to the Minnesota Vikings. Remember, they have 11 and 23. They didn't trade because there's no trade-ups. They ended up getting J.J. McCarthy with the 11th pick, so they've got the quarterback taken care of. And here they are with a little bonus uh, pick here at pick number 23. You wouldn't say wide receiver is a need for this team when you've got Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, but I know when you draft a quarterback in the first round, you want to give him as many weapons as humanly possible. So when you can't go to the defensive side of the ball, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to stay at the wide receiver position. Oh man, there's a lot of different areas, a lot of different receivers mm. that are intriguing here and interesting. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take the home run hitter here on the outside. I'm going to take Troy Franklin uh, from Oregon, who gives you some big time over the top speed, which is going to clear things out uh, so that Justin Jefferson, and Jordan Addison can go to work. Oh man, DJ, right now, boy, you. Whew. I'm, I'm Jerry start getting Jones. A little, start getting a little lean here once yeah. we get to this point. I'm, when I'm Jerry Jones. Only. Yeah, I'm Jerry Jones. I'm Stephen Jones. I'm sitting here and I'm wondering, like, what are we going to do? How are we going to play? Our, our offensive line appears to be a little bit of a mess. Um, Tyler Smith, we, we couldn't come to a deal with him. Uh, look, it's win now mode. We got to be able to figure out what we're going to do. I got, I got people dealing with injuries and, and all this other stuff. And I'm looking at the board, and DJ, you're right now. It's, we're. we're Look, we're we're down to it. Gosh, do I go tackle? Do I go center? Do I go tackle? Do I go center? Look, I, I think I'm a I'm a bet on this. I think I'm gonna go Zach Frazier from West Virginia. I know he might need some time, but I know yeah. it's a position that we have to have. And so Zach Frazier from West Virginia comes off of the board right now. We just have to be really patient when we put him in the lot the lineup. All right, now. Uh, now I got to dig. I got to dig a little deeper. Here <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was gonna take Frazier. That was my pick. That's what I was gonna take. 
I mean, you look at the the uh, Green Bay Packers don't need a wideout. I mean, that's they have got a great young group of wideouts. They've got a zillion tight ends. There's not a tight end worth taking here. Um, so now we get into some of these intriguing names. Uh, golly, mm. yeah, it fall it falls off here once we get those three mm-hmm. interior guys go. Now it really falls off, man. Uh, hmm. Tell you what. Mm-mm. Yeah, there's no, right. there's no, there's no, there's uh, no trading out, no punting, no passing. Oh, you got a <laughs> stick and pick here. So I'm, I'm trying to pull up where I have these guys. Yep. Sorry, I'm taking Ricky Pearsall here. I'm just taking best player available. I, I don't, even, I don't even. Uh, I mean, Ricky Christian, comes off the board. You've got, you've got uh, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Bo Melton. Dontavian Wicks. I mean, I don't know. I guess we just played mm. eight eight receivers, but I, he's got. A, I have such a higher grade on him than I get to like Christian Haynes uh, all mm. on the interior. So I'm gonna. I gotta stay true. Best player available. Uh, okay, now if, if we're doing that. Talking about best player available and where we are. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, we just re-signed Baker Mayfield. We're all in on the Baker Mayfield experience. Uh, we have the big bodies on the outside and. I was prepared to have the conversation with this guy if Mike Evans didn't resign. So now let's revisit the conversation. I know the 461 uh, 40 kind of really dinged him at the combine, but the catch radius is so spectacular. The athleticism that he displays when the ball's in the air. So Keon Coleman from Florida State, I'm taking him right now for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We have a basketball team on the outside. We just go on bean top everybody with these big playmakers that we have on the perimeter. All right, so you've got Keon Coleman. This, by the way, this exercise is showing you the depth of receiver in this draft class. <laughs> um, so now I'm up next with Arizona. Uh, Arizona, we ended up getting uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. with our with our fourth overall pick. Um, you look at their wide receiver room right now. You've got Michael Wilson. You've got Chris Moore. They signed. Um, I still think you can add more firepower there for Kyler Murray. And you lose Hollywood Brown, uh, Buck. So why don't we go get the next version mm-hmm. of Hollywood Brown? Let's go out and get Xavier Worthy, uh, the fastest man in the country here, fastest man in the draft, fastest man in the history of the combine with the 27th pick. So you've added that receiver room. I think that looks a little different now when you've got Marvin Harrison Jr. and Xavier Worthy. Uh, it, it it definitely looks a, a, a lot different. And we are burning up these wide receiver picks. I mean, just absolutely when in doubt, <laughs> grab, grab a wide, wide out. out. What, what, can, I mean, I don't, even know, I don't even know if some of these guys are going to make the oh, team in, in Green Bay. Gosh. I got 10 wideouts. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right, so here we go, the Buffalo Bills. And it's, it's, it's funny because, like, the conversation in Buffalo, uh, it doesn't appear that Stefan Diggs is very happy with us. Uh, we have Curtis Samuel <laughs> that we brought over. Um, but we really have a bunch of question marks at wide receivers. So, DJ, here we are with all these wide receivers. And I'm like, man, can, can I take another one? But – I'm looking at the wide receivers who are in my. So here's a conversation that we're having in me. Brandon Bean and I, we're sitting here talking. I got Roman Wilson. I got Jermaine Burden. I got Jalen Polk. Or we can talk about, hey, man, let's, let's get to the line of scrimmage. Let's continue to make sure that our quarterback is beefed up. Mm. <sighs> let's go get a tackle. Let's go get Kingsley. Oh, you have to help me with this. Sumate- Sumatea. Sumate- uh, Sumatea. Sumatea yeah. from BYU. Like I don't have it in front yeah. of me. Yeah, man. But it's around yeah. there. You're close. Sumatea. We're going with BYU. We're just going to get another pass protector in the fold because we just can't keep taking all these skilled guys in an offensive only draft. The big got to have some love. I'm going to give him another offensive tackle to make sure that Josh Allen is protected. All right. Um, uh, I've got Detroit. And we've got some interior offensive line. Um, yeah, you know, that we you don't sound as excited. At. You don't sound as excited that we did the bottom of the first. I round. don't love it, but I'm uh, I'm looking at it and I'm going. Hold on, let me pull up my own list here and see what how I'd have next here. Okay. Oh man, this is gonna be this is gonna be tricky because this guy is gonna he plays a little bit similar to Amara St. Brown. Um, mm. Amara St. Brown does a lot of damage in the slot. Uh, this is this is a player, though, that I think fits from mm-hmm. a, a toughness standpoint and uh, and kind of a scheme fit here. And I think he's got his pro day. Uh, he's got, do you have his pro day coming up? I think it's coming up maybe today or tomorrow. But um, 
I'm going to go Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky Ooh. with the wide receiver to add, again, more speed and toughness. The guy who is literally known as the Yak King, um, throwing him in the mix there. Uh, you can flip him the ball. You can throw him a bubble. You can uh, you can let him work in the middle of the field. Just all day tough kid with big time, big time speed. So I'll go Malachi Corley. Wow, look at Malachi. It's deep. We're taking deep breaths as we get to these uh, end wow. of the first round picks here. Malachi Corley comes off the board right there. Bing. Let's put him in. I just take Detroit. a. I think I've taken a receiver like my last eight picks. I think something. Like hey, yeah, that. that's okay. Like you, you're very, you're very quarterback friendly. So let's Jeez. stick to the brand. If I think about. Baltimore, where the Ravens traditionally do, they try and take like a rugged player, someone that's tough, someone that's physical, someone that can help them out. So let's go. They're revamping this offensive line. So let's go with Christian Haynes, uh, the guard from Connecticut. Um, it would be easy to plug in another wider, but they don't need a wider. They need to run the football. They need to be physical. And I'm going to go with Christian Haynes from UConn coming off the board. Oof. All and right. Way, way early. That's a lot of, that's a little rich for my. Well, life. hey. It, it, buzz, it is what it he's, is, he's, man. He's gone. He is gone. All right, I'm, I'm going to break the cycle with the Niners. I've been taking all receivers here. Uh, when you look at them, though, I think they could upgrade at right tackle. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about mm -hmm. this name, but I'm actually a big fan of this player. And it was interesting when I when I watched him. Uh, Blake Fisher from Notre Dame, yeah. the other tackle on the opposite mm -hmm. side of Joel, is a good player. I think he's a better player than, than Aaron Banks. And Aaron Banks mm -hmm. went from... Tackle slid inside to guard starts for the 49ers there. I think worst case scenario, Banks ended up sliding in and being the opposite guard there uh, for the Niners. But I think he's got a chance to beat out Colton McKivitz at right tackle. So I'm going to go Aaron Banks here with uh, with my pick, my final pick in the first round. Mm. Okay, so now here we go to Kansas City Chiefs. And oh, sorry, Blake all... Fisher. I shouldn't say Aaron Banks. Blake Fisher. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got Blake Fisher. Same school. I got, I got There's the comp. Same school. I got Blake Same Fisher. School. Here we go, Blake Fisher at 31. So now the defending champs uh are sitting here uh man and the board is wide open for them particularly at a spot where look we can say pat mahomes can play with anybody on the perimeter i'm stuck now so my options are do i want a vertical playmaking threat like a big stretch player like xavier leggett who could replace mvs mm -hmm. uh do i want a crafty playmaker like roman wilson who can work over the middle and do some of the catch and run things that they do with all the bubble screens or whatever but with hollywood brown and Rasheed Rice, uh, I think I'm going to go with the bigger body. I'm going to go with Xavier Leggett. I'm going to okay. give them the big body playmaker on the outside. And um, see if we can knock it out like that. There we go. There you go. That's it. Uh, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to send this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to send it to Nabil so that he has it. This was a, uh, <laughs> this was a fun exercise here, Buck. By the way, the... Uh, the uh, the stress goes up a little bit once you get into the twenties when you're only doing one side of the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it starts changing on you pretty quick. Yeah, uh, it's a it's it's it's, it's definitely a different it's it's a different exercise. But what it does, DJ, it does let you know the depth of the draft on a certain, certain side positions. of the ball and so the shallow we, level at some of the others. Yeah. So after a while, there we had oh offensive tackle alley. We go through there, and then it's oof. It's all yeah. pass catchers and playmakers. So we do understand why so many people are excited about what could happen on day two when it comes to the pass catchers, because we had so many wide receivers go in the first round of this offensive only draft. You can tell that teams would get a really good player on day two if they elect to get their perimeter players on the second day of the draft and focus on the line of scrimmage players on day one. No doubt. Um, fun exercise, man. I hope you guys have enjoyed that uh, along with us. Just having a little fun, doing a little something different here. Uh, that'll do it for us today. Uh, be on the lookout. Our next episode will be Bucky's latest mock draft. So be on the lookout for that one right here on Move the Sticks.